Welcome to the Human Conversation Podcast with Jules White, the real dragon slayer, author and entrepreneur sales coach. Tune in weekly for Human Conversation about business and sales. Enjoy business expert interviews, educational episodes and virtual cuppers with entrepreneur business owners. So grab yourself a cuppa and enjoy. Here is your host, Jules White. So welcome to The Human Conversation. This is episode 21 with the fabulous Eleanor Gould. One of my dear friends now, and I don't care whether she minds me calling her that because I just have. So she is a second time guest on the show, and um, but she was way back, episode two, I think, Eleanor. Is that right? Yep, I was. Yeah. Well, welcome, my lovely. It's so nice to see you. Hello. Hello, and thank you for having me back <laughs> so soon. Well, you must have been good the first time because I've had you back again. <laughs> <laughs> So um, the, you, the first time we spoke, episode two, we talked all about LinkedIn, which is one of my favorite platforms and obviously yours. And we, that's where we met, actually, I think, isn't it, originally? That's right. Yeah. Um, so we had a, a fantastic episode around LinkedIn. So if you have never listened to episode two, go back and find it because it was a really great episode where we gave, uh, well, Eleanor gave us all the golden nuggets of how you set up your LinkedIn profile so that was super and talked about content but today it's going to be a little bit different we're going to talk a little bit more about um we're calling it the truth about freelancing because Ellen's, right. yeah ellen's actually the founder of creative copywriting and her new venture is the utterly compelling academy how exciting Ooh. is that <laughs> thank you yeah the utterly compelling academy is basically the home of my online courses so I think the last time we talked about my utterly compelling LinkedIn content creator course I've also got an utterly compelling email storyteller course and copywriter and then my latest one is the utterly compelling freelancer so not as long <laughs> so yeah this, this is quite a bumper course actually and it's basically all my experience of being a, um, a freelance copywriter condensed into a course all the things all the mistakes I learned along the way really so I can help other freelance copywriters I'm quite passionate about that because I see especially on LinkedIn people asking questions about freelancing people get stuck on price about USP about how to build a freelancing business and I see a lot of conflicting advice and it's very confusing and I've been there you know yeah. you've got imposter syndrome you don't quite know your value you don't quite know where to start then you get comparisonitis it can be a bit of a minefield so I put together this course to help people new to freelancing find their way and really boost their business because you know it can be so difficult and quite a lonely venture as well and it's easy to look at other people and compare yourself when really there's no need you just need to you know be your, be yourself as much as you can especially in freelancing you can do that yeah I think the comparisonitis thing is really poignant isn't it I know I've mm -hmm. done it I still do it at times I really do because I'll see somebody who's very visible and they're out there, they're getting chosen for things and their books are on the bookshelves. Um, and I'm sitting here thinking, Oh, my stuff's better than theirs. And why aren't I there? And, and of course I'm not there because I haven't made it happen myself, you know, and actually I'm different to them anyway. I am unique. Yeah, you've, so. Everybody's got a different path and that's a really important point actually Jules because we see other people and they're at different parts of their journey and we don't know what's going on you know behind the scenes so often it's not uh, all as it seems so comparing yourself to others yeah you can have benchmarks and have people who inspire you and you look up to sure but at the end of the day we've all got our own unique path and you know, my course is not uh, prescriptive at all. I don't have some methodology that you have. You absolutely have to follow because, uh, as I say throughout the course, it's I always say, you know, do what works for you and test, test, test. So that's the main, you know, ten minutes of the course to provide value and do what works for you. And I, I keep on saying that throughout. I'm like a parrot, really. But but yeah. So 
<laughs> that's what I'm really all about at the moment because I've seen so many people fall beside, you know, stop freelancing and it's such a shame because there's so many talented people out there, you know, graphic designers, photographers, writers, who are really amazing, have got these great gifts to give to the world and help other businesses and consumers and customers and that they give up because they've been sold this dream of what it's like this whole we're going to make six figures seven figures whatever yeah. freelancing is wonderful you haven't got your own boss well actually you have got more of them <laughs> yeah, that's so true <laughs> called your clients oh and the worst <laughs> boss in the world you <laughs> yeah i don't know but i am i am the, i'm a terrible boss of myself I'm i am way i don't let myself stop working you know so yeah got all these other challenges as well I love, I love that, Eleanor. I love that talking about, um, I just want to, want to sort of focus on that for a minute. The fact that you are your own boss. So it's so true, isn't it? It's almost like um, the boundaries have gone when you're your own boss, you know, um, because we can so easily move them because it's up to us. I find I'm sitting working through the evening. You know, I might be working until yeah. late at night. Um, if I had a boss, I very much doubt they would make me sit at my desk in the office until 10, 11 o'clock at night. They'd probably have let me go home at some point. Um, but yeah, I don't let myself Possibly. go home. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> well, at least you'd be getting paid overtime for it. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? So I think it's about having boundaries, isn't it, with that kind of thing, when you're talking about being your own boss. That's really important. Yeah, having that time to take time out, that's really important important because without that you don't actually grow you, as a creative freelancer you don't get the the inspiration and it can you know permeate through other areas of your life into your relationships everything if you don't take that time out it's so important okay. but it's you know like you say when how i've got when you're running your own business you are running the show light bulb goes out you can't phone you know services come and do the light bulb you've got to change it mm. something happens with your computer that's your problem mm. you know mostly most freelancers don't have the funds to outsource to vas all over the world like uh you know you can when you you're in a salaried position you just delegate that or, or phone up some department when you're freelancing you are on your own for the most yeah. part yeah very much and the decisions so, and accountability is all down to you yeah very much so where do we start with this conversation i guess i'd like the definition of freelancer how about that one to start you off well yeah i've heard it bandied around before that we shouldn't really use the term free because people <laughs> have that in their mind straight away uh, freelancing now with the explosion of the internet and internet marketing and online services, it's kind of changed, hasn't it? I think the definition has changed. Technically, an entrepreneur is a freelancer. Yeah. Isn't it? So, you know, when I say freelancer, I'm encompassing anybody who's running their own business as a solo entrepreneur or mm. who's giving their services uh, via a contract, usually. Mm. That kind of... Uh, that that's who I'm defining the, the person who's on their own the person who needs that bit of help and extra support in the community around them they're the people who I'm targeting people like me when I first started out I had for me it was um choice and a lot of it was necessity you know not everybody goes oh they're sitting in their office nine to five oh I hate this I'm going to be a freelancer yes yeah. that's a lot of them but some yeah. people become freelance because they're made redundant or it's necessity they have to be a freelancer yeah. not everyone jumps into this thing oh i've got an entrepreneur's mindset yeah. and this is really key as well that we have those skills like i'm a writer when i started out yes i can write i didn't know how to sell yeah. i didn't know how to sell my services and this is you know where you've come in and that's how we met of course yeah and i i cover this in the, in the course as well that you've got to sell your surf, services every single day you have got to be filling up that sales funnel you you know, marketing is not part of the business. Marketing is the business. And as a freelancer, you need to know that. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. this is, again, where a lot of freelancers fall down and get into that feast and famine cycle. So they've got lots of work, one minute, no work the next. And they haven't been keeping their pipeline full the whole time that they've, you know, been in the feast stage, if yeah. you like. So, yeah. yeah. And that's really important. Pipeline's one of the things I tend to cover in uh, more probably my corporate work. 
but actually in, a, in an entrepreneurial capacity, your pipeline's just as important because you've got to be always, as you say, putting things in. Otherwise, what happens is you come to that kind of desperate place well, well, actually, I'm only talking to three people at the moment and none of them have said yeah. yes yet. And, the, and that feeling, and everybody will resonate with this, I know if they're listening, that feeling of, oh my goodness, if these all say no, there's nothing else out there. So, yeah, you know, exactly. but, but actually we're responsible for that. We are responsible for, the, for being the one who is always putting those opportunities in because the opportunities mm -hmm. are the ones that then turn into, into that business through the pipeline. So it's a really important part, isn't it? I think as well, it's kind of that now you are in a position you're wearing every hat. You know, that's mm -hmm. the fact of it, isn't it? As you said, yeah. we are solopreneurs. Um, so unless you've got a lot of disposable income to in, either employ people or, you know, hire them out, um, other freelancers in essence, mm -hmm. you are really responsible for doing lots of stuff yourself. So, okay, where do you start then, Eleanor? What's, what's the priority, do you think? <laughs> well... I think the priority and and this is also for people who are have been freelancing a couple of years and just it's just not going anywhere go back to the drawing board and start from the foundations and really understand exactly who your ideal client is mm. your USP um, you know your branding is that on point is it coming across in everything you do so that's why I take you through I take you through the foundations like before you even left your job what you need to do you know you need to connect with people there's questions you need to ask but you can ask other freelancers and i've listed a load of questions you can ask freelancers who are currently uh freelancing in that area you are in um and i have also you know there's branding exercises there's usp exercises so there's everything there that can take you through those steps and if you get to that step like that you can go back yeah. and keep on using those steps. Yeah. And it's fine. I mean, they call it pivoting now, don't they? I prefer to call it evolving. Yeah. We do evolve as people and as a business. And that's perfectly okay as well, you know? Very much. And, you know, yeah. you, you talk about the fact that it, you can keep going back to it. I, I feel like it's quite evergreen in that sense then. So oh, yeah. you, you're into the courses in this fabulous academy that you've created they're mm -hmm. quite evergreen in that you can just keep then revisiting them as and when you want to is that is that right Eleanor well I think we all even if we've been in business a few years it's handy to keep on going back and to the drawing board and make sure we've not missed anything along the way because we do I know I have I didn't have a clear value proposition and sometimes I go back and change it I I have evolved myself more into info products in as much as my courses and that's the way I want to go rather than than done for you works that's the way I see myself going that's where I can now provide more value with the experiences I've had whereas when I first started out there's no way I could be the person I am now so yeah. the exercises I did when I first started out aren't going to be have the same yield the same result that they, they do now Mm. But yes, the course goes through, it's a um, 12 module course and it takes you through where to find clients, how to best attract clients. And also it's got things like what you should have in your contract, it's got sample proposals, it's got a sample sales script when you're on the phone with that awful client call, oh my God, that's terrifying, what you can do, what sort of questions you should ask. And it's even got a bit about uh, a proposal for Upwork if for people who go online and use on online job boards so it's kind of everything that you could want <laughs> well, that sounds really good so um let's talk about what your advice is if we look at your journey as a freelancer and obviously where you've come to today now where you've got this academy you're able to produce fabulous courses because of the experience you've had if I'm this new freelancer coming to you, or even like you say, one who's a bit stuck, because I kind of feel like they're at the same kind of, they probably need the same thing in many ways, don't they? Just like you say, going back and go back to basics. Um, what, what's the things you would say to them in terms of advice? Uh, the first thing I would say is you've got to really know what you're offering to clients and how they perceive it. So really understand the value you're providing mm. and also the value you're not providing. A lot of people get mixed up with that and can think, oh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm worth so much with this whole, this whole new value pricing 
apparently it's new but it's not you know <laughs> other than the charge yeah. value prices so <laughs> it's no it's not a new thing um so people can let their egos get away with them and think they are actually more valuable than what they are. And that's a hard thing. You've got to leave your ego at the door. Yes, I agree. <laughs> because that will be key to you actually becoming successful and being able to provide more value to your clients. Yeah. Number two, I'd say imposter syndrome, deal with it. Because otherwise <laughs> that will follow you throughout your career. You'll never yeah. get rid of it. You've got to have a strong, positive mindset or healthy habits that help you create that strong, positive mindset. The third, I would say, make as many friends in the freelancing uh, community or the business you're in as possible and collaborate with them. Do not compete. Yeah. Well, when I say don't compete, yeah, let, let, let's face it, you are going to compete in, in, in some sense of work. It's better to collaborate than compete nine times out of ten. Yeah, well, I agree. <laughs> and the thing is, you know, it's like, We've always said your unique selling proposition is you. So actually, you know, no one else can be me. No one else can be Eleanor. Um, no. And we have to have real faith in that because it's, it's very important in the grand scheme of things. I could teach exactly the same as someone else teaches, but they choose me because of me, not because of yeah. my content. You know, although so they'll love my content, but that's the reason why they would ultimately pick me because there's that kind of, it's a gut reaction at the end of the day. It's how our brains work when we buy, isn't it? Because I talk about this in my book. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, so I mean, you attract, you attract, you know, your vibe attracts your tribe sort of thing, but it's so true. If you're really um, genuine, then you're going to attract people that are aligned to you and your core values. But this all comes down to the, self-discovery exercises you do at the beginning to understand really who you are because you don't yes. sometimes we've been in this kind of corporate shell and we forget we lose our own identity instead you know for a long time oh i'm compliance manager that that is i identified myself by my job title and yeah. i think a lot of people do that it's really hard to get out of really yeah. hard to yeah. And, and some of the things I talk about is things like, what are your core values? Because they come from when you're really young, from your childhood, yeah. you know, and actually mm. they, they will be part of what makes you you. So you actually, you'll probably mm. work alongside those values that will be part of yes. why you do what you do and how you, how you come into the world, to, into the business world. So those mm. things, those kind of core traits, strengths, values that you already have had most of your life will be really mm. critical to your business. Yeah, absolutely. That's my dog. Can you hear my dog on the podcast? Then? Oh, yeah, he's allowed because I'm a dog lover. So he's, he's just my, one of my many canine supporters. <laughs> we do love our dogs, don't we, Eleanor? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so I think this whole, like, self-discovery stuff is very important because take that through then into your business. There's that authentic side then. Yeah. That, that is your USP. That's why people trust you, like you. What is it? No like trust. Those yeah. all, all those things start to kick in, and that's the connection, which I talk about a lot with my sales stuff, is that connection side, the human connection. Mm -hmm. um, so that's People know when you're faking it, because I see oh, it sometimes it might be easy, like, oh, I really love so-and-so's brand. I'm going to, you know, bring of that, some of that into myself. It's like me, if I was to suddenly dye, dye my hair blue, you know that's not me. Mm. You know, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with dyeing your hair blue, <laughs> but no. that wouldn't be me. That's not a part of my persona. And funny enough, uh, I had uh, a potential client contact me the other day and they wanted their copy done in a certain style. Of course, I'm a copywriter, so I can do it in many different ways. But I said no, because I, I didn't want, I knew I wouldn't be happy doing that type of copy. I'm mm. not your sassy you know, <laughs> badass or anything like that. That is not me. And I will, now I've got the, uh, the opportunity, if you like, I can say, no, that's not my client. And even if I needed that client, I'd say no, because I know I wouldn't bring value to that work. Yeah, that's a massive point. That just there yeah. is a massive point because there, you know, when we're in a situation where we just really need to earn some money, it's so easy yeah. to take on those jobs that just earn oh. you money. And they always, always go wrong. Always. always. Even they go, always. oh, I've had this client before. They were, they were a bit of a pain in the yeah. backside. 
and then you take them on like oh, I, I knew that was, I knew this was gonna happen yeah. I knew it. <laughs> and not only that I bet you they were the client who tried to badger you down on price as well so they weren't even wanting really to pay a good price for what you the work you did so no I, I yeah. totally agree with you and I know it's very easy to say but actually I think trust yourself a bit more and be kind to yourself in that you know what you're good at because you do we all actually know what we're good at we just don't necessarily sit down and do that exercise and learn it you know yeah yeah and although this sound might sound a bit woo-woo to some trust in the universe because once you've closed that one door to the client that's not suitable for you you'll find that that opens for the space for something right for you to come along although yeah sometimes it's not that quick sometimes it doesn't feel like it but you've that's why you need to be prepared for those times that feast and famine cycle and hopefully if you build the right systems and processes in place that won't happen or yeah. it'll be mitigated but you've got yeah. to mitigate that time and time you've got to mitigate that negative build up of emotion as well as much as you can yeah it's so true <laughs> so i kind of like to bust some myths with you how do you mm -hmm. feel about having a go at that okay okay <laughs> Let's bust some myths around freelancing yeah well what's what's happened because i know how to bust myths against sales because mm -hmm. <laughs> i hear a lot of myths about sales going around what's the stuff you hear going around about around about freelancing that actually it's not quite true uh yeah for from the outset charge what you're worth from the outset yeah. you're probably not worth that much <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because you haven't had that experience don't get me wrong some people are yeah i'm not saying i'm not saying that but if you haven't got the experience or portfolio you've got to start from where you are yeah. and build up on that so that's number one if you can't just walk into this like, glitzy freelance or nine times out of ten you can't i'd say you'd be very lucky if you can and mm. go for it absolutely i'm not dismissing that so yes this idea that this whole value pricing thing that suddenly everybody's charging for their value. Well, what is your value? How are you defining that? Yeah. The prices is a big thing and it's a subjected thing. It's a very emotional thing. And everybody's got an idea, haven't they? Everybody's telling you when you first start out, oh, you need to charge this, oh, you need to start that. Yeah. Stop, go back to the drawing board and really think about your pricing. You don't have to charge the same as everybody else, but you do need to know how to properly position yourself yeah, so number that, one is the, the definitely a myth buster charge what you're worth from the get-go and i think um, as well you know what you're worth that, 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 <laughs> that's what you're good, worth actually but yeah well yeah but it's such a good point because you know actually it's not about the price it's about the value you bring but the value then has to be in some format that i as your client think is value because that's yes. value it's not what you think is value as much as What's the value you bring to me as your client? Yes, because yes, I might absolutely. say to you, oh, well, I'm, I'm huge value, Eleanor. You know, I've been selling for over 30 years and uh, I wrote a book and, uh, and I went on Dragon's Den. So I'm huge value. Well, yeah. you might not need what I've got in just that little piece. You might want me to be saying something else for yeah. you to think mm -hmm. I've got value. So you, you can't, Absolutely. you know, one of the big things I see happen, I mean, I know I'm going off a bit at a tangent because I, I see this, this is myth busting for the sales side of it, if you like. I see these people presenting and saying, so our company's been going for 30 years and we've had this client and we've got this award and I've done this and I've done that. And that's how they open their sales pitch mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they think that that is value to their client. Yeah, that doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean a thing does not mean yeah. a thing it means something at the end of the presentation if you want to put it there it's what i call the icing on the cake but at the moment you're not telling me anything that's a benefit for me as your client so that's value yeah. you know yeah. i'm very passionate about this value piece and we see yeah. so often now i think in the online space all of these people charging these huge price tags for their coaching um, and promising they're going to get you to six figures this six figures that it's yeah, a massive I know. red flag so for annoying. me, Eleanor. It's a yeah. massive red flag. Yeah, it's, it is for me. I mean, with going back to your clients, you've got to show them the transformation that you're going to give yeah. and deliver. Yes. <laughs> and you just, just deliver it. See, this is where copywriting, uh, it, you see it a lot. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to write your copy and you're going to get this, that and the other. Are you? 
Can yeah. you promise me that? No, you can't. You can't promise anything in this world. Yeah. So, you know, that's the thing. The other myth I would say is about branding. Uh, there's a big, uh, what branding actually is. I think people get a bit confused and think it's the colours on your website and having pink all over your Instagram yeah. Uh, feed. Yeah, very nice. Nothing wrong with it. <laughs> but that's not branding. No. <laughs> you know, that's, that's visual. That's the visual element of branding, yes. But it's not branding. Your branding permeates everything you do. It's the way you deal with people. It's 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 your service. It's everything. So branding is not just just the colours on your website. So mm. I'd say that's a big myth. So it's, you get you know branding experts. Oh, I'm gonna you know you, you should wear blue all day or wear a pink hat, and that's part of your brand branding. And say the F word a lot, and you're like, eh? yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. that's not really my branding, is it? Unless you, unless you were born like that or that is who you are anyway. Yeah. I think there's a lot of people trying to be other people. <laughs> yeah, I do. I agree with you. And I see so much of it. And that's why, and, and there's, there's got to be a reason why they're afraid to be themselves, you know, that, cause that, that's kind of how I, I see it. So that's yeah. the bit they need to work on because we have to come into the world as us. If you don't yeah. like me, that's okay. Because not everyone's going to like you. Not everyone's going to buy. Mm. You know, mm. it's okay. And um, mm. so we've got to give ourselves a bit of a break, don't you think, sometimes? Yeah, stop the trying to, you know, another um, adage um, when you market into everyone, you market into no one. Good. So you repel the people who don't like you. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. They'll talk about you, won't they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Was it they say no PR is bad PR? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm not so sure about that. No, I know, yeah. <laughs> Rattler's found that out pretty. Yeah, yeah, although I think he's bounced back. Oh, he's no still, age. still making money somewhere, I think, Eleanor. So, yeah, I think he's bounced back somewhere. So, but yeah, yeah um, and, I think yeah. branding's a really good one. It is, it's so much more than just the colours on your logo, isn't it? It's, mm -hmm. it's about everything that you do, your voice, how you put your content out, how you serve your customers. It's, it's everything, mm -hmm. isn't it? And again, yeah. if you're not authentic with branding, you're going to come unstuck because people will see oh, the yeah. disparity, won't they? So it's not going to work, is it? So. so, you know, later on down the line. And the third thing I would say really is there is no one way. I think a lot of people think there's only one way to do something. There's all sorts of different ways mm. to do things. There's all sorts of different ways. Your path might not be the same as somebody else's. So just because you're in an online business group and everyone's saying, don't do that, hey, try it. Yeah. Be willing to try things out. I mean, I, I know this because I found every time I've said, I'm never doing that, I end up doing it. And I actually is quite successful for me. For example, I was always against job uh, boards like Upwork because, you know, their bidding sites are like a race to the bottom for freelancers. And then I took a course on it uh, a friend of mine was running a course so I took his course and lo and behold I was successful on Upwork which I'd always for years told people don't go there don't go there <laughs> yeah. you know I'm now a top rated freelancer on on Upwork and it didn't take me long I just applied a system that's it and I thought well I've done that now that isn't that good I've done something and then I can teach other people how what the system I use so Exactly. You know, always be learning. Don't fall for one strict, prescriptive way of doing things. Yeah, I agree. I, I love that so much. I think that's how I looked at creating my own methodology around sales. Mm -hmm. I didn't want it to be, now you need to say this, now you need to do this, now you need to go it's here. Not, isn't it? Uh, that's what I love about your your methodology because it allows you to grow and evolve and you can use it whatever way you like. It really does it really your methodology is a catalyst i see it as a catalyst for huge growth and, and potential in others and also you can keep on going back to your book and looking at things and oh yeah oh yeah. yeah yeah and that's what i wanted it to be because i think all i'd had in my sales career was this training this tell training oh. telling you how mm -hmm. to do it this is how you do it this is how and actually you won't close business unless you do it like this and it's really interesting, isn't it? Because that, that world is out there and it's very prominent, I think, especially in the online space. This is how yeah. you have to do it. Um, and I find that quite scary because there's so many people when they're new at it 
of course they're going to be clinging on to those you know every word that someone says they'll be holding on to it and mm. following it because it's they don't know any any better so it's a bit of exactly. a minefield out there as well isn't it Eleanor I think it is a minefield and that's why when you start out it's, it's important that you really understand as you say do the self-discovery exercises and understand who you are and bring that strength out just because you're an introvert doesn't mean you can't have a great brand as well uh, mm. but you know you don't have to be an extrovert to be a freelancer no Free, or or any service you're providing if you're a freelancer an entrepreneur or you know service company at the end of the day it's all about in my mind bringing value i know the v word yeah however and what that bringing value to your clients yeah. and also really understanding who you are being yourself and stand standing in your own power i'd say mm. Mm. i like that i like that a lot we talked um we, we touched earlier on um kind of value and price didn't we and um we've seen quite a lot in january uh, obviously standard isn't it beginning of a year quite a lot of people out there with their offers their pitches their price um increases <laughs> price increases what, what happened in this oh well, i guess it was christmas i guess you got to pay for christmas but <laughs> why do i don't why should i pay for your christmas <laughs> yeah that's the thing isn't it and it's, i don't understand that it's i don't understand just, why it has to be january no well i think are you giving me a different service yeah it's it's just a it's that kind of end of the year um milestone place where everybody makes new year resolutions everybody puts their prices up everybody does something different and new um actually i think one of my advices would be to uh, entrepreneurs and freelancers always be doing new things always every month do it not just in january that would be good but also i think this whole um i'm putting my prices up thing i still don't think and people will disagree with me i don't think we need to announce that to the world i think when someone wants to do business with you you have your discovery call you find out what they really need you, you show them your value you give them your price Mm -hmm. that's how I feel about it you know mm -hmm. I, I just think this whole banding prices around all the time and saying my prices are going up is that that scarcity thing yeah but you said that didn't you it's like this scarcity yeah, kind of marketing, <laughs> marketing yeah. Cheap. <laughs> yeah but the trouble is when so many people do it it becomes transparent and then actually mm -hmm. we, we start questioning it a bit and thinking well hang on a minute is it is everybody then doing it and so well what what does that mean and I, I, I guess I'm a skeptical old sales coach, Eleanor, really, if I think about it. But this time of year... Yeah, I think really if you're putting together an offer, like a Black Friday offer, like you and I did, and that, that's the time because everybody's like, yeah, it's Black Friday, yes. I'm going to go and get my super offers. I think that's a completely different thing. But to just keep on discounting and telling, telling people your prices are going up all the time, come on, it, yes. it gets tiresome, doesn't it? It does, and it becomes confusing. And then actually your focus is on price more than it is on the, what the value is you're getting within that, that mm -hmm. transaction as well. So, mm -hmm. But that's just my take on it. I think it's just that time of year where you just feel like you're bombarded and everybody suddenly comes out the woodwork because they've suddenly got energy in January. But by February, it gets all a bit quieter again, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe February is the month to do it, Eleanor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you we've done some uh, pieces of advice for freelancers we've done some myth busting what else do we want to tell these guys when they're they're coming out into the freelancing world what's the truth that we really want to tell them eleanor we've given them a lot to be fair in this podcast i think oh, i think we, we were given enough of them in to find out the secrets yeah that's it there you go the truth is there are no secrets no, exactly. so anyone who thought you just said anything like the secrets of freelancing there are no secrets don't do it <laughs> <laughs> there are systems and processes but they ain't secrets no no they're not they're definitely not well i mean i think the best thing to do if you're really listening in wanting to know more is to absolutely go to eleanor's academy her utterly compelling academy and yeah, I'll drop buy some of her courses <laughs> yeah that's really compelling freelance so it's a video course don't worry you don't get me you don't get a picture of me the whole time ready to go uh but i do talk you through the slides there's plenty of um downloads and 
exercises for you. So yeah, just get in touch and uh, it could be the course that sets you up for success. Yeah, completely. And I think that's the point, isn't it? You know, just, just if you feel like it's something for you and it feels good and you trust it, then just do it. Don't do a million courses. Don't keep um, buying coaching. You know, I've seen uh, this before. You can just go through your life doing that. Yeah. You can become a course junkie. Yes. If that yeah. course is, at the end of that course, you can't think, uh, you can't see that that's given you any results or you haven't taken action, then don't do any other courses. Take action on the courses you've already done. Absolutely. So, yeah. And that's the key, isn't it, really? It's, as much as it's amazing, you know, the content you give is amazing. I'm not just saying that because I've done your LinkedIn course. So I do know that for a fact, but also you and I have become friends. We talk a lot. We exchange advice, which is brilliant. And so I know that you're good at what you do. I know you're very good at what you do. Well, actually, you wrote the foreword in my book. So, of course, I wouldn't have asked you to do that if I didn't think you were <laughs> great at what you did. But the point is that, you know, there are so many people do go and buy course after course or buy coaching program after coaching program. They usually yeah. end up saying they're all a load of rubbish. But mainly, well, there's two things, I think. They get very confused because they're all different. And so they don't know what to do first. And the second thing is they don't take the action on the stuff they've learned. And of course, yeah. they're kind of fun. Some people are looking for a magic bullet. Yeah. Like I know for a fact that some people will go straight to, on my course, straight to the pricing section and straight to how to find clients section, rather yeah. than doing the bits, the foundational work up front. And then you're like, that's not going to serve you well. No. You've got to. And you've got to build the foundation. Yeah, absolutely. Same with my stuff, live it, love it, sell it. That's exactly the same stuff, isn't it, Eleanor? You start yeah. with that live it stuff before mm -hmm. you even start going on the sales road trip. You've got to be able to know what your mindset is and yeah. who you are and your yeah. whys and stuff. So yeah, completely great, great advice. I mean, I can't thank you enough. It's so cool talking to you. I love it. I could talk to you forever. I always Ooh. say that. <laughs> but it's good because it's good stuff and it's important stuff and it's it's actually simple that's the other thing it's not yeah, complicated it and overwhelming at all it's simple and it is about finding the right people and surrounding you yourself with good people i love yeah. that it's about collaboration not competition this is massive now you know mm -hmm. so so get into that frame of mind where you find something that really works for you something simple something you trust work yeah. through it and then take action and quite mm -hmm. frankly that's your course so yeah. there's no more to be said really on that one is there <laughs> <laughs> we're done not that this was a sales pitch because it's not actually it's quite a serious conversation in my my point of view was i really wanted to talk about the truth stuff Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of noise out there, as we said yeah. earlier. I think there's a lot of noise. And I think it's very overwhelming. Um, yeah. I hope our noise rises above some of that other noise so that people can really hear what authentic and genuine people are doing in this space. Um, yeah. Just so exactly. that they realise there's some really good stuff out there. Because there is. Yeah. So. There is good stuff, but there's also some, you know... Uh, we're in desperate times the whole world's in desperate times people all do desperate uh measures for to get to get ahead and unfortunately yeah. it means that some people will be less honest than what they probably want to yeah. be so and yeah. and you know trust your gut trust your gut if something was hugely expensive then find out what the value is in having to pay such a big price yeah. tag and if it doesn't feel right do not pay it you know, honestly, I'm, no. that's how I really feel about this now. And, um, you know, I just, we, we don't trust our guts enough, but our guts tell us a lot of truth. So if it just doesn't... I think sometimes when it, we go for these big high price things, it's almost we're trying to validate the purchase, isn't yeah. it? it yeah. <laughs> this is the same with how uh, luxury shopping and how people get you to buy things. I know a bit about that. I'm a copywriter. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Almost. For your sins, uh, yeah. It's, it's your fault, about, Elena. It's your fault. It's my fault. <laughs> it's all my fault. It's your fault. <laughs> Sometimes purchases, you're validating something else. There's another, well, most of the purchases you would buy on emotion. Think about what you, you really are trying to fulfill when you're going on these really high expensive courses if you yeah. can't afford it or if it's not providing you the value what are you doing it for is there something you're avoiding perhaps freelancing is not for you 
Well, yeah, that's so true as well. Mm -hmm. Like, like we say, not everyone's going to buy, not everyone is going to be a freelancer, you know? No. Um, but yeah, I, it was, it was a great chat because it's really pulled in some key points for me. So, you know, kind of the advice stuff starting at the foundations, just start there at the beginning, because if you rush to get to the middle, you've missed some of those really vital elements that are important for that whole journey. You know, so, mm -hmm. so do that. Take that time to do that stuff. It's really important. But also just think about things like, you know, what do you really love doing? What are you really good at? Go out as unique you. Stop the comparatonitis. Easily said than done but stop it yes. um, mm -hmm. and just trust that you've got a massive value to bring into the world, but build that value. Because when, like, yeah. like you said earlier, when you first start, you can't go out with these big price tickets because what's that based on? So, so just go out with good value, build the business in an authentic way. Um, and I think trust, trust your gut and yeah. surround I yourself with amazing people. Myself. Yeah. Surround yourself with amazing people. Like me and Emma. Yeah. <laughs> so who, who's going to get in touch with you, Eleanor, and how are they going to do it? Who do you want to get in touch with you, and how do they do it? Uh, I'll leave the link to my website, but you can contact me on LinkedIn, or, uh, you know, I've got a website, Creative Copywriting, and I'll drop the links. But I'm um, also, as I said, on LinkedIn. Just get in contact with me if you want me to tell you a bit more about the course, and I'll drop the links to the, the course. Um, below <laughs> below <Yeah. laughs> i don't even they know will, when the below is going to be, will but be yeah. below. it will be a below <laughs> depending on whether you're listening on um itunes or whether you're listening on soundcloud we're now on spotify as well so you were all everywhere i know you know me eleanor um but there'll always be a narrative with each podcast just to give you some background and in there is where i always put the links so you'll be able to find all the links for eleanor and her courses and it's for guys who are starting out, but equally, you said anyone who's a little bit kind of stuck, maybe just wants yeah. to sort of move on a bit um, at a, a better pace. Yeah. And who wants to know about systems and processes you need to have in place, such as proposals, contracts, all those other little things that make your business actually function and work properly? Because yeah. that's a big part as well, but we won't go into that because we'll be here at another hour or oh, something. Oh my goodness, yeah. So, but, but it's good because we've kind of done the mindset stuff, but we've also touched on the fact that you'll also get that practical stuff from this course. So you are. Oh yeah, yeah. there's tons of practical stuff yeah. and checklists for things you should have in your contracts and mm. uh, just things like that that helps you with the process. Because if you don't have a process, you, you can soon find that your clients start falling through the cracks pretty yes. quickly. Yes. And, that, and that that could be pretty frightening as well. No, it's amazing. <laughs> I've, I've done it myself. <laughs> I know. I think we've all done it though, and I guess like that's how you learn from the mistakes you've made oh, yeah. anyway. So, so we're learning from a master here, which is great as well. But thank you so much. I'm really excited about your academy. I think that it's the reason I'm excited is because you have all of this amazing experience, and it's great that you've put it into that format so that others can tap into it. That's really good. I love that you've done that. So thank, you. thank you. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. So um, if you've enjoyed listening to Eleanor and I waffling together, having a human conversation, putting the world of uh, um, freelancing to rights, then uh, please subscribe, whichever channel you're on. Please leave a comment if you love it, because that's the way to do it. And we hope that you're going to join us again. I'm sure Eleanor's going to be here again, because this is a... Yeah, I'm going to be here again. I'm Eight crash in your podcast. Yeah, she's kind of making a regular appearance uh, gently, isn't she, onto the podcast. But um, please tune in. Uh, there's a lot of podcasts being recorded in the next couple of weeks that I'll be putting out there. So we are getting proper active on the human conversation. Very excited mm. about that. And thank you for listening and joining us. We will see you again very, very soon. Ta-da for Thank now. you. Bye. Bye. You've just been listening to the Human Conversation podcast with Jules White. To find out more about the other work that Jules does, please visit her website, www.liveitloveitsellit.co.uk. And if you enjoyed the podcast, then please do leave a rating and review on the platform you use to enjoy her show. Thanks for listening and see you next time.